welcome to Miss Martin Muses and another history tale. I just had so much fun last week talking about 1066 to celebrate my 1066 subscribers. I thought, well, why not keep going? Because it gets even more fun. Tonight we're talking about heirs and spares and the heir and the spare and why you should never go on a royal hunt. Also, I like to give a little bit of the whole Game of Thrones House of the Dragon coming in there, especially the next one, which I plan to have next week, where we go full Dance of the Dragons, or as I like to call it, a dance with Plantagenets. But today we're talking about... Uh, King William VII and Henry the First, and I thought it was kind of funny that the same they had the same names as a, a current heir. And well, he's not so spare, is he? Not anymore. So please, everyone, let me know if the sound and everything's okay because I have some weirdness happening on my end. Um, I think everything is all right now. Um, I need to keep my eyeballs on because if we have. Uh, different issues with looking for stickers. So if I get any stickers this way, I can see them. But hello, look who is here. It is Archer Colin, who probably knows 10,000 times more than I about this. But you know what's really cool? Archers are going to play a role in this, aren't they, Precious? Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, boy. It, it, it's almost funny. But not funny for the person on the other end of the arrow. It is Charlie Stevenson. Apparently it did. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, I did mo have to move it back. I was, you know, having life happen. So, hello, all. Well, it is Jacob Ironside. Thank you for being here. As always, sound is good. Yes. Archer Khan says, never go on a royal hunt, especially if you have red hair. <laughs> That's right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Dear, oh dear me, the poor bust. Well, he wasn't a bust. His daddy was, though, William the Conqueror. And if you do kind of follow along with the fake history of Westeros with George R. R. Martin's uh, Song of Ice and Fire and Fire and Blood, you know, there's Aegon the Conqueror, and some of these do rhyme. He, he admits it, he says it, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's fun seeing a fictionalized version of it, but this is an example of real life being just as fascinating as not real life. Everyone's saying, oh yeah, it is the evening over there in the future. How is the future, Archer Colin? Um, I hope it's not too bad. Yeah, there was a sad situation that I woke up to that happened in the future in Australia. Of course, I don't, for reasons, don't you know, want to get into it, but definitely feel for everything that's going on there. But let's get into the heirs and the spares. So last time we had 1066, a comet happened. Everyone loves a comet to mark a, a huge shift in everything. There was a question of succession because Edward, St. Edward the Confessor, did not have any children. And his closest blood male relative was his great nephew, but it was like no one wanted him. So, allegedly, Edward promised the throne to his second cousin once removed or first cousin twice removed. Forget which one it is. William the first, who will be known as William the Conqueror. He was William the Bastard because he was one. And then Edward dies and Harold, his brother-in-law, no blood relative, was all uh, he promised me that I was going to be on his deathbed. And then we had a big old battle, 1066, epic battle, the Battle of Hastings. To make a long story short, William won. William became William the Conqueror. He is the king, and that is where we are today. Archer Collins says, I didn't watch Game of Thrones, but was aware of the War of the Roses. Cousins were inspirations. They hadn't been aware of earlier historical Connections until the last stream. Ah, well, thank you. Yes, yes. And there's definitely War of the Roses, Cousins War. He's explicitly mentioned it. 
um but yeah he he plays around with this of course what's going to happen during the anarchy which i call a dance with plantagenets and i laughed so hard when i thought of that that i was concerned about myself because i'm like will anyone else think that's funny i don't know but that's just how it is archer says i had a few hots on the uh, the whole William thing. Oh, uh, please, if you feel like sharing in the chat, please go ahead. Because of all the eras that I really, really know that I studied in college when I was getting my degree and my theses, all of that, it was around the Renaissance Reformation era in England, but also in Germany. So it in any details, especially an archer and somebody actually from the past, 1200. So let's go ahead and jump into it. But before we do, oh, look, Taylor Swift, greater than Disney stars and MCU has shown up. All right. So William the Conqueror dies. Now, interestingly enough, it is not his first son that becomes the king, it is rather the second son. Here he is, William the second. Or rather, he's not the second son. See, that's why we are talking about never go on a royal hunt. He was like the spare to his brother Richard. And as Richard was out on a royal hunt <laughs> and died by an accident. We've got lots of accidents happening. So that's how William ended up being the king. Now, the first son, Robert, he became the Duke of Normandy. And I think the whole idea behind it, as explained to me, was that was the, the duchy was the first born son by right, because that was what William was first. And because he had conquered the kingdom of England, that's why the second son was going to get England. Of course, we now know that it was much cooler to be the King of England rather than the Duke of Normandy, but that's how it happens. Archer Collins says, I kind of spanned your comments after the last stream because I missed it being back in the fourth century, 14th century. <laughs> as i was yes it it happens uh, living in the past is sometimes almost as bad as living in the future let me see i'm gonna go to this here and see what i can yeah oh yes you you mentioned about william building the battle abbey near the battlefield supposedly out of remorse for the deaths in the battle yes that is correct and i don't believe that it still stands because of actually i don't know if that was because of henry the eighth or in elizabeth or not congrats oh the doubly misnamed bayou tapestry yes yeah i did not get into that because when we talked about the bayou tapestry it's more like an embroidery and you know commissioned by the bishop Odo of Bayou, probably made by English seamstresses, and in fact contains pro-Herald propaganda, where he dies the wording translates, Herald the king is killed despite William's claim that Herald was not king. There's a suggestion that when Herald swore on the relics, he did not know they were actually there, so was tricked into making a holy oath. Interesting. Also, the Lotus Eater's website has an entire series of video for members on the monarchs of England all the way back to Athelstan. William alone has no less than five episodes. Well, you heard it here, everyone. Thank you very much for that information. And it's okay. You, spam away. Was that William Curthouse? Hose. Yes, it was. Yes. So he's off being the Duke of Normandy. That's going to come to bite some people in the buttocks later. But we'll get to that in a minute. So here he is hanging out. He reigned from 1057 to 1100 AD, and he was king from 1087 to 1100 AD. So he was the king for 13 years. Now, he never married and didn't even have any bastards, which 
led some to believe that maybe he didn't like the ladies. I always get slightly skeptical of that because often when the king, okay, even if he didn't like the ladies, I, I don't know why he didn't just marry anyways and close his eyes and think of England. So either way, though, it, I think it's odd that he never took a wife, even a fake wife. He didn't even get a beard. Also, some contemporary accounts said he liked things certain ways. He had some favorites at court and was often very, let's just say, pretty looking. He liked to dress fine. So perhaps that is true. I, I'm just hesitant to say for certain because who knows what really was going on in the bedroom. Oh, wait, do I have him down here as William the First? He is William the Second. My my slide is wrong. This is obviously William the Second because his father was William the Conqueror. Yeah, check this out. These are some of my notes here. This is from Wikipedia. William's second son, Richard, had died in a hunting accident. I just want to put quotations around hunting accident. Really, I do. He died in a hunting accident, leaving Henry and his two brothers to inherit William's estate. Robert, the eldest, despite being in armed rebellion against his father at the time of his death, received Normandy. Yeah, things weren't exactly friendly. England was given to William Rufus, who was in favor with the dying king. Okay, so that's also a possible thing here. Now, he he was named so because he had red hair. That's what we're saying about red hair. Just so we're not sure, I, I decided to throw this bad boy up here. You have William I. These are his dates and his reigns. He married Matilda of Flanders. They had 300,000 and 200 million children. The, the ones, though, that are relevant to what we have here is Robert Courthouse, William II, and Henry II. So you can see the way the line goes. And I guess Richard didn't make this particular timeline. I think they had nine children. I was exaggerating. One became a nun. I forget what happened to the other ones. It is Zax. Hello, Zax. Thank you for being here. We are talking heirs and spares and why you should never go on a royal hunt. Here's my deal. One hunting accident. Okay. That took out the spare. But two? Hmm. And if you do watch Game of Thrones, we know that a hunting accident happened to change things. Archer Colin, yay! Thank you for helping out here. Matilda was apparently quite short. Horrible Histories has a great sketch about how William courted her. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, you know what? She was like four feet, and he was like kind of tall and stuff. I was watching a French movie about it, a French documentary slash movie, and when I first saw them going to get married, I was like, Dude, that's a child. No, she wasn't a child. She was incredibly short, which is kind of amazing that she was able to have that many children without dying because women died all the times back then in childbirth. And someone that small was able to pop out nine, maybe more children because stillborn miscarriages, all those kinds of things were incredibly common. It was so dangerous to give birth to children. But she was okay. Maybe it was all those prayers. Who knows? They, they were very devout, or at least allegedly very devout. The women usually did tend to be. It's like, hey, you know, you got <laughs> to take it where you can get it. But from what I understand, there is no sign of William the Conqueror having any bastards or cheating. So this is where we are. We have William the Second, And you're going to see that we're going to have Henry the First. <laughs> yes, we will, precious. All right, this is a description from a historian, William of Malmesbury, also from the wiki. He was well set, his complexion florid, his hair yellow, of open countenance. Check this out. Different colored eyes. It 
you know from the books, The Song of Ice and Fire, this was a thing, having different colored eyes. Varying with certain glittering specks of astonishing strength, though not very tall, and his, his belly rather projecting. I love the way they write. I love it more than life itself. Gosh darn it, this is what I went to college for. One of these days, a lot of my essays... With one exception, there's one I don't have the right to reprint. I might go ahead and make video essays. I have done that. My Beauty and the Beast was an, ep an essay that I published that I turned into a video. Yeah, but the one essay, actually the one I'll never tell you about, is the one I do not have the rights to. So maybe I'll get out my old college things because this is so much fun. I love this. I really, really love this. So he's a pretty boy but also different colored eyes, glittering specks of astonishing strength. See, this is the thing. If I were a noble lady back then, and if I knew he kind of liked dudes, allegedly, I wouldn't care if he looked like this. Oh my gosh. Though I've said on more than one occasion, if I had lived back then, I would have been a nun so fast you wouldn't have even seen me. That was the safest place for a lady to be. All right. So we have already one spare that went to the great beyond because of a hunting accident. Now we have William Rufus, the king, after 13 years of the reign on the uh, afternoon of 2nd of August, 1100. Why guess what happened? I put quotes on here because this is not my writing, obviously. This is from the wiki. On the afternoon of 2nd August, 1100, King William Rufus went hunting in the New Forest, accompanied by a team of huntsmen and Norman nobility, including Henry. Hmm. An arrow possibly shot by w Baron William Tyrell hit and killed William Rufus, the king. Many conspiracy theories, I wonder why, have been put forward suggesting that the king was killed deliberately. Most histor modern historians reject these as hunting was a risky activity and such accidents were common. Now, this is something you need to know about modern histor history and working as a historian, that even if we believe something is true, if we cannot find proof of it, we cannot publish it credibly. Okay. I still think it's awfully, awfully a coincidence that this baron hit and killed the king and of course he took off which frankly i would kind of do if i killed the king but there have definitely been rumors about hmm well an arrow and it just not didn't just hit him it hit him square right where you where right where it counts and william uh, sorry uh, I think it was William Tyrell. Sorry. Walter Tyrell was allegedly a very good archer. Oh, definitely turn on the, in, those into video essays. Oh, okay. Well, maybe well, there you go. Like I said, all the ones that I have the rights to, I will. A lot of these will revert back to you. Depending on the deal that you make. All right. Different colored eyes. He's Nif Limmy. Okay. I'm not, I am going to sound so stupid. Help me out with that definition. Maybe I'll make that the word of the day. That is Steve Kenobi. Hello, Teresa. Good to see you're researching my family history. Yes. Well, remember, it's my family history, too. Because your friggin' ancestor shagged my ancestor before William the Conqueror came over. Dagnabbit. It's a, it's a fact, actually. I, it's proven with DNA and proven with etymology. Though, okay, 
that I, my ancestors came over and that someone from a Viking shagged somebody. Or maybe they even got married. No proof about Stieg, though. But he's a Viking, so I blame it all on him. Henry V was also shot in the face with an arrow, but survived. Yeah, didn't he? That was wild, especially back then. My goodness, he could have, like, my goodness. Infection? And that man was meant to survive, though he didn't live too much longer. But, yeah. So we have another king killed. Here it is in art. They didn't have TikTok back then. I love this picture. <laughs> or um, This was made, I think, about 100 years after his death. But I love the way he's got the arrow right in the middle of his heart. And he's like, dude, what the hell? Really? <laughs> and another guy's like wagging his finger. And the other guy's like, my bad. <laughs> I think this is one of the funniest pictures I've ever seen. I don't know if you have a chance to go, what the hell? <laughs> After you get shot, but he did. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. It's quite amazing to me that the English royal line is practically a direct line from Henry the Bastard Conqueror to Richard the Third. It is. And there's issues, obviously, when I get to the War of the Roses, because... It, it's going to be Henry the Seventh with a very dubious claim to the throne, but he kind of gets it because he won it on the battlefield. It is amazing how it worked out. Oh, dear. Um, I guess William shouldn't have been wearing a deer skin tunic. Yeah. So if, oh, shit. Mate. Oh, my cat. Um, if you are going to go on a, um, a royal hunt. Wear a lot of armor, especially if you're the king. That's the original Twitter meme right there. Yeah. I mean, damn. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I already said it, but the Beauty and the Beast was based on a published essay I did. And the under you can find it under lore in the playlist. Now, this is another picture of him. And he's he's looking kind of sad. Look at that frowny face. I, maybe it's just me. But if I were to get an arrow right in the chest, I'm not so sure. I would just sit there and frown and go, me so sad. Me so sad. Archer Collins says, uh, Mar Miss Martin Mises, when you get to Henry III in the start of the 100 years, that's the period I reenact. Dude, I, I follow you on Twitter, don't I? Uh, and you follow me if you're on Twitter or X, let me know because I want to, um, if, if you're interested, I'm interested in having you join me because once again, anytime I can get an expert on that, Charlie Stevenson, no hunter safety classes <laughs> required back then. <laughs> yes. It's, we need more arrow laws. All right. I'm going to have to mute for one second. And for once, she didn't yell at me when I moved her. Okay, we have... Oh, it's a cat I'm talking about, not a human. All right, Charlie Stevens. Yep, no day dag <laughs> safety dogs. Yeah, I find it suspicious. I've said it once, I've said it twice, and by golly, I'm going to say it one more time. Not one, but two heirs to William the Conqueror were taken out by a hunting accident. And check this out. You can go and see a stone talking about it. Here stood the oak tree on uh, which an arrow shot by Sir William Tyrrell at a stag glanced on over to King William II. Yeah, I can't. Gosh, I should have gotten one that where you can read it a little bit better. So they're blaming William Tyrrell shooting a stag and he died. Dun, dun, dun. So you can go see the stone where the tree was. Or where Robert Baratheon 
met his end. Remember King William Rufus, who died in these parts, then known as Truem, whilst hunting on 2nd of August, 1100. Let's see. Those black assault arrows are scary. Then you get to the white ship disaster. Yet another air mysteriously killed an accident. Yeah, I was about ready to say, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. That's why we're here having airs and spares. The, my in, thing is, that was really, you had to have really have planned that one. All right, so now look who it is. The next in line, Henry. What does it say? Henricus Primus. He becomes the king. Yay! That's how we get Henry the First. His reign will be from 1068 to 1135. And as you can see here, from 1100 to 1135, that is his reign. He married this chick, who was also called Matilda. All these chicks were named Matilda. She looks like kind of frowny, doesn't she? He actually had a lot of bastards and acknowledged ones. And one of his bastards will play a role in the anarchy. So his first wife only had two living kids. So she dies. And then he marries another chick. Forget her name. What is her name? I don't know why she looks like she's flying, but that's the only picture that we think we have of her. Yeah, his first wife was Matilda of Scotland, and this chick was Adeliza of Louvain. Check this out if you've watched House of the Dragons. She was 18. He was 54. He's like, okay, we need to get ourselves another man child. We have only one heir. We need a spare. But they never were able to have children. So no heir, no spare, nothing. Not it. I'm sure she was very nice and lovely. And from all tales that people tell, they got along fine. So here's the line of succession now. We have ourselves William the First, William the Conqueror, King of England. Then we have Henry the First. He came after Henry the, oh, sorry, William the Second, but you know, he became king. He married Matilda, oh, who happened to be the niece of Edgar Atheling. Check this out. Edgar Atheling, he was a guy who was the closest blood relative of William the First, but it was like his great, great nephew. So Matilda being the niece of Edgar Atheling, I don't think that was a problem of sanguination. Oh, but you know what was a problem? At first, people tried to fake it out and say that she was a nun and that that's why she wasn't uh, and they couldn't get married. But she wasn't a nun. She was just raised in a convent, sent there for her education in England and her aunt like put a veil on her to try to protect her from her virtue or something. And she was like, I never took the veil. She just put a veil on my head. So that was the issue, not the fact that she was this kind of a relative. All right. So two living kids, William Adeline and Matilda, who married Henry V, the Holy Roman Emperor. He's a another dynasty. So that's why sometimes she is called Empress Matilda. It helps to call her that because we have two million Matildas. I mean, Henry's mom was named Matilda, his wife was named Matilda, and then their daughter was named Matilda. For crying out loud. Is she I mean the deeper swim? Yeah, that picture's wild. He had a lot of snows. Yes, he did. <laughs> what would that be in England? If you know. I guess it would be rain because it always rains in England. All right. So, yay. Look at us. We have William Adelin. He's, he's the heir. But as Archer Colin alluded to, oops. 
we had a shipwreck. There they are, shipwrecking. I love the way they're always like, no. It was considered, what's the quote I have here from William of Malmesbury? No ship that ever sailed brought England such disaster. And it was a bad one. What was it? It was like 300 people died in that. And, and it wasn't just William who died, the heir, but also a lot of other nobles. It, it, was, it was pretty bad. Let me see. I'm trying to get to some information here on my notes. Because meanwhile, there's always a lot of like intrigues and rebellions and stuff. But we're not going into that. Yeah, it was the sinking of the white ship. It happened on November 25th, 1120. It, it was a vessel transporting many nobles, including the heir to the English throne. That, and it was crossing the English Channel and near the Normandy coast off Bavflor during a trip from France to England on the 25th of November. Only one of the 300 survived. Dun, dun, dun. Lots of Matildas, Eleanors, and later Isabellas. Oh, heck yes. Not to mention Elizabeth's. Ken Follett's, Archer Collins says, Pillars of the Earth includes one theory about the white ship disaster. Oh, interesting. You see, because I, I know, you know, was it an accident? Was it just something that sucked? Yeah, he actually... Two of his snow uh, rains, rather. <laughs> That's probably nicer than saying bastards. Who was also named Matilda. His half siblings in Matilda of Perch. Yeah, gosh, imagine naming your your illegitimate child, the one you cheated with your wife on, after the same name as your sister, and this. Oh, uh, sorry, the same name as your daughter, and the same name as your wife, and the same name as your mother. But okay. Richard the, of Lincoln, he died. He was also another uh, half-brother of the heir. And the Earl of Chester, he died. And Geoffrey Rydell. Yeah. With William dead, the king had no obvious successor. Let's see, what happened? Yeah, there were 300 people on board. And there was a lot of drinking going on. And the ship's captain, Thomas Fitzstephen, was ordered by the revelers to overtake the king's ship, which had already sailed. The white ship was fast, of the best construction, and recently had been filled with new materials. Oh, yeah, this is something, too, that William actually got into a lifeboat. I remember this. And could have escaped, but turned back to try to rescue his half-sister, Matilda. So, yay, nice guy. His boat was then swamped by others trying to save themselves, and William drowned along with them. Just sucked. Okay, Potato Ribbon says, hello, thank you, hello. We're talking heirs and spares and never go on a hunting, a royal hunt. His father was never the same again. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone's saying hello to each other. Yay. We enjoy people saying hello to each other here on Miss Martin Muses. Laugh out loud. Queen Matilda is in my family tree. Really? Well, there you go. We have ourselves a true descendant. Of course, the immediate problem was. The heir was now dead. We had only one male heir. That was legitimate. But he's dead. I guess the moral of the story here is don't go try to rescue your sister. But, you know, come on. So, with him dead, there is only one legitimate heir left, and it is Matilda. Now, Matilda was married to Henry V, the Holy Roman Emperor. That's why often she's called Empress Matilda, as I said earlier. 
And then she married Joffrey, the Count of Anjou. This is, a, he's a Plantagenet. That's why I thought it was cute to say dance with Plantagenets. And she will have some babies with this second one. And will also be over in Normandy when things hit the fan. That's what you get for trying to be a nice guy. He drowned Jacob Ironside. Yeah, no good deed ever goes unpunished. I'm descended through the barons of Limerick and the earls of Tyrone. Hey. The race for the throne, they light locked her out of London. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Is that the end? Oh, yeah. Paranoia. <laughs> We're not talking about paranoia. <laughs> that, that, that was from my other, other stream. Archer Collins says, ah, but then again, without the white ship disaster, we might never have had the Angel of Empire or Brother Cadfile. Hell yes, we need Brother Cadfile, the great detective monk. Yes. Oh my gosh. You see, it, that's why some of these fiction things are so incredibly cool. But, but check this out. It's got a chick who is the heir to the throne. And it's like it goes through the dudes, right? Well, guess what? Henry decided that he was going to make her his heir. And in Westminster Cathedral, he had them all swear that she was the legitimate heir to the throne. If you've seen House of the Dragons, you know exactly how that went down. So once even though he named her his heir, even though they all swore the lords and all that. Yeah, this is where it comes from. Mm -hmm. She is overseas and pregnant when her father dies. And his nephew Seize, take that opportunity to seize the throne and then we're going to go into a civil war over the succession. A dance with Plantagenets. It even has the same ending as Dance of the Dragon. So, oh, spoiler alert! Ah! Okay? <laughs> there, it's, it's fun. And I have no problem with, again, with George R. R. Martin using this because he said it. It's like a fictionalized version, but of course with all sorts of magic and dragons. There is a do wonderful documentary, says Potato Revan, of the wolves of Britain. She was a fierce woman. Hmm, cool. Well, I hope to learn more. And remember, I have said that this is not exactly my great forte. This is something that I like and that I studied a great deal. But if there's anything that you can all add to it, please do so. And did she get to ride her dragon? <laughs> no, no. There's going to be lots of battles, though. Lots of them. So there we go. We have some heirs and spares. And imagine this. If they, if they all hadn't been going hunting, it would have been Richard who would have become the king instead of William. Oh, gosh, that's another thing. How many of them can be called Richard for crying out loud? And then we wouldn't have had this problem. And then, of course, maybe if William had stayed king. Huh, who would have been the heir? Oh, well, it still would have been Henry unless Henry died. But either way, William had a hunting accident. So now we have Henry. And then Henry, even though he was able to father lots and lots of kids, I think up to nine, he only had two legitimate and then one was on the English Channel and died in the white ship disaster. So I guess we should add, don't hunt and don't go on ships. Or else you will die. And you will drown. 
Um, Charlie Stevens said, oh, wait, I already said that. Did she get to ride her dragon? Is that the She-Wolves of England? I will check that out. So this is where our party is going to end because that is, frankly, all I've studied. And then the next time we're going to talk about the, it's called the Anarchy. The big old civil war that's going to break out over the succession. And maybe I'll find some cute little pictures to go along with it. So thank you as always, everyone that is here. And if you would please maybe watch some of my content, some of my other content, if you are enjoying this, I am so close to these watch hours, like literally like 20 hours away. But what happens is you'll gain some, then you'll lose some because it all rolls over at midnight. So if you wouldn't mind in, 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 in do engaging watching, you know, just maybe watch one or two um, and help me out here and maybe learn some more or correct me, especially if you're Archer Colin, who knows a lot more about it than I do. So please do so. See, they're still talking the anarchy, a.k.a. the first English Civil War. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Imagine if they did have dragons. That would be cool. Matilda flying around on a dragon. <laughs> what would she? She would go crazy and burn down London. Well, that's the TV show version. We don't, oh, don't even get me started. Uh, I would have mixed it up because she, she would be Renera, not Daenerys. Great show. Bye, y'all. Well, thank you, uh, Jacob, for being here. Imagine if the House Plantagenet survived. Wouldn't that be, that would be very interesting. And uh, as you know, I have strong issues with 1688. <laughs> the king over the sea. Over the sea to sky, but that's a whole other ball game. The current Japanese royals are the 127th Emperor of Japan. Oh my gosh. That's pretty awesome, actually. That's pretty amazing. All right. Well, thank you, everyone that has been here. Um, let me see. We have Potato Revan, Archer Collin, Charlie Stevenson, uh, Jacob Ironside, Steve Kenobi popped in. Um, let me see. I want, oh, Zach, thank you for popping in and waving and doing all that jazz. Taylor Swift, greater than Disney Star Wars. And everyone that will be watching on the replay. Yeah, they're all the same family. Yeah, it, it's really fascinating, these dynasties. And I think that that's why we continue to enjoy things like, well, House of the Dragon, it's this history, fictionalized history with, dragons and magic why we enjoy things like shogun i'm really behind on shogun right now i'm watching fallout currently that's the imd for she wolves oh okay fair enough yes and what's another good one well i think all of these intrigues are are really good and i think that's why there's so many movies made out of Henry VIII. So much drama. Unfortunately, though, some of the recent ones have not been very good. They're trying to put a modern spin on them. But you can't do that with history because by its very definition, it's not modern. I dislike Philippa is it Gregory? With a unnatural hatred <laughs> her books and their adaptations are horrendous it just hurts and it hurts that people think that that's the real history she's always like this is what i imagine could have happened gonna watch the first episode of fallout later i've seen varying assessments yes so far i have been enjoying fallout i really have I'm watching it leaving all the baggage behind. I'm not an expert in the game, so I can't speak to the lore change and stuff, but I know people who can. So I will be doing a stream about it when I finish it. It is Meteor Advocate Timon. I'll catch a replay. Lunch got delayed. We were out of propane. Oh, that sucks. Well, it sounds like you all were enjoying yourself, so that's fantastic. That's all I got to say for today. Thank you for being here and have a great day, everyone. Have a great day and be certain. Oh, 
Just a minute. I got another comment. I actually tried reading The White Queen, but the combination of first-person narrative and presence put me off. Oh, yeah. Well, and... Oh, the way they... Oh, the way they wrote her. The White Queen TV show, the one on Stars, is tolerable because I think it does a decent job of explaining to you like the War of the Roses. I, they will introduce you to the individuals, the, the players, and who ended up where and who ended up winning. But everything else is garbage. G-A-R-B-A-G-E. And oh, the White Princess. Oh, kill me now. All right. Jacob Ironside says, with Fallout hold in there till episode four when it really starts to get good. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I'm on episode two. I think it's really good. Bye, all. Yes, bye. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. And be certain, be certain to never go on a royal hunt.